Hello, and welcome to the Bird Watching Channel. This is a program titled, Where Are My Hummingbirds? And that's a question I get regularly from folks all season long. I'm your host, fellow bird watcher and fellow hummingbird lover, Sharon Sorensen. Ruby-throated hummingbirds arrived in southern Indiana and northern Kentucky in early to mid-April. Since then, feeder populations first dwindled, but now in early July, they're growing. So why is that? Well, it has to do with migration. The further north birds have to go, the earlier they arrive here. So the first hummers to visit our local feeders aren't going to stay with us. They have their GPS set for more northerly destinations, some as far north as southern Canada, aiming to nest where they grew up. As they fattened up here and moved on, others replaced them, but this next batch of hummers were aiming for ancestral sites not quite as far north. And so it is that finally, by mid-May, our hummingbirds, that is the ones that are going to stay here to breed, trickled in, males first, followed by ready to nest females. A female chooses her own territory apart from males and builds her own nest. She does all that alone. And when she seeks a mate, it's a quick affair. She watches a displaying male performing his swooping shuttle display. And while she's doing that, she's looking for the meanest, most aggressive male she can find in order to pass on the best genes to her offspring. If he measures up, they mate. Then she returns to her territory to lay eggs, incubate, and raise her brood again alone. She's a busy single mom. Now she must also keep her eggs warm using her 104 to 108 degree body temperature to incubate. On cool days, and if your body temperature is 104 to 108, 100 is cool. So on any day that's less than 100 degrees, she can't be away from the nest more than seconds at a time. And we know that in early spring, those days can be quite chilly. So feeding becomes a very quick affair for her. And if we're really quick too, and basically never take our eyes off the feeder, we might get a glimpse of her at our feeders. And that is until early July. In early July, there's an uptick at our feeders, and we see a good many females with their white-tipped tails, or so we're being fooled to think they're all females with white tip tails. In fact, probably what we're seeing are the first fledged babies. Those fledglings, now having been abandoned by mom, aren't quite adept at finding the best food sources, but they do find our feeders. And fledglings, both males and females, look like mom with the white tip tails. Meanwhile, though, mom is back at work, and by now she's built a second nest and is likely already attending a second clutch. So once again, she's an infrequent and speedy visitors to feeders because she must tend her eggs. Finally, when all breeding females have again returned to nest duties, the males, who have nothing more to do at this point, begin gorging, aiming to double their weight, preparing to return to Costa Rica. And the females, well, they're still on their own. If we look at the calendar, we can see how hummingbird populations fluctuate and build at our feeders. As we said, the birds begin arriving here by mid-April. The females arrive later than the males, so you may have seen males the first week of April, but maybe you don't see a female until the third week of April. But the females arrive then, check out food supply, check out nest sites, and by the first two weeks of May, they're busy building a nest. Takes them at least a week. And when the nest is complete, as we said, that's when they seek a mate. So in mid-May, the part in pale blue, 
they, the females lay their eggs and incubate for two weeks. So they are rarely at feeders at that point. We will see males, but rarely females. By late May, the last week in the dark blue, they begin feeding a brood and they feed their broods for about three weeks into June. And so the last two weeks of June, their babies are ready to fledge, but they're not very adept at finding food. And so mom continues to feed them for a short period of time. Meanwhile, she has built a new nest. She has found another mate. And the first two weeks of July, she's incubating her second brood. Now, once she's incubating that second brood, she's not going to feed the fledglings from the first brood. So those fledglings show up at our feeders hungry. Now, keep in mind at the same time, the males have nothing more to do. If all of the females have taken to their second nests, these males start leaving. So our males are gone by mid-July. And you say, well, wait, I see males much later in the year. Well, of course, because the males from up north have to migrate back down through here and they will be coming through to visit feeders to fatten up on their way south. So that takes us to the last three weeks of July, again in dark blue, where the females are feeding their second broods. And by the second to third week of August, those second broods fledge. And once again, she'll feed those fledglings for a week or so. So that takes us to about the last two weeks of August and the females are through with the kids. They start gorging so that they can move south. There are also migrants moving through. And so the population at the feeders suddenly grows because the second broods are finding our feeders. The females are starting to gorge in order to move south. Migrants from farther north are finding our feeders as they're heading back south. And by September, the first and second weeks of September, it's hummingbird peak. So if you start looking for your hummingbirds and wondering, oh my gosh, I saw so many hummingbirds last year. And here it is the first week of June and I've seen two. Well, lucky you. The peak hits in September. And that's because everyone is at the feeders. The first and second local broods, the adult females, remember our adult males are gone by now, but adults from farther north have come, the first brood migrants, the migrating adults, everybody's here. It's a madhouse. By late September, the adults are on their way and everything that's left will be the juveniles. In my own yard, my latest hummingbird has arrived on October the 23rd. Obviously it was a youngster and obviously it was the one that needed the feeder most desperately. It might well have been a bird that hatched in Canada. And here it was two weeks out of the nest trying to find a feeder in my home. So the adults are all gone. The kids are on their own. Somehow it's hardwired into their DNA about where to go. So depending on the month and the week, Hummer populations will vary dramatically at your feeders as the birds hatch, fledge, and head south. The adults first followed by the fledglings. Enjoy the cycle. What a thrill to know where they're all going and that next year they'll all come back. I hope you've enjoyed this program about where are my hummingbirds. Thank you for joining me. May you enjoy all of those birds, not just hummingbirds, 
and may you always have birds in your binoculars.